six common WordPress issues and how to solve them if you happen to have them on your website in this video. Let's begin. By the way, if you're regularly having problems on your WordPress website, it's usually faster, cheaper, more efficient to get help from a professional. And WP Beginner has just started offering their pro services, which includes WordPress website maintenance services as well. So if you're having problems on your WordPress website and you need professional help, there's a link down in the description and also in the pinned comment, you can go and purchase pro services from WP Beginner directly and we'll help you solve your problem. So the first issue we'll be dealing with is a internal server error. Now this might show up in a variety of different ways. So look at my screen here. It might show up like this, where it actually says internal server error or it might look like this where it says HTTP error 500, or you can see different kind of language here, but essentially it means the same thing. Now, the problem with this error is that it doesn't give us any direction on what is wrong. It's basically telling us, hey, something is wrong, but even the server can't recognize what is the problem. So what you have to do is try out a bunch of different things to isolate the root cause yourself so that you can solve this issue. So I'm gonna give you the next few steps that you need to take to solve this issue. The first step you should be taking is clearing your browser cache. On Chrome browser that I'm using on, inside the menu, you have options to clear your cache, but I prefer the keyboard shortcut. Uh, you can press Command or sorry, Control, Shift and Delete. And then on Mac, it might be Command, Shift, Delete. And this brings up this menu, which is the clear browse data. So what I would do is go here and select all the site settings and site cache and everything else, cached images. And I just clear it out for at least four weeks or, or more just to see if that solves the problem. If it doesn't, then move on to the next solution. The next solution is regenerating your HT access file. Now, sometimes the HT access files gets corrupt and by just doing some things in WordPress, it can be fixed it. So here's how, what you do. You go into your WordPress admin area, go to your settings and inside the settings, you go to the permalink settings. And most of the time, the permalink settings must be set to something that you've already set up. So either the post name, custom name or whatever you prefer. Now, all you have to do is just click save changes one more time without making any changes. And you'll see this success message, permanent uh, or permanent structure updated, and this will regenerate the XTSS file and the rules inside it. And then try if the error is being solved. If this does not work, then, then you might have another problem with HT access. So let me tell you how to solve that. Another issue might be that WordPress might not be able to access the HT access file. Now, as I've said, this problem doesn't have a very defined root cause, or at least we can't find it. So you have to try this as well. So what you need to do is use FTP to log into your website's files and folders and then rename the HT access file to something like HT access old. And once that's done, you create a new HT access file directly on the server using FTP and then add this piece of code, which is the default WordPress code of HT access. I'm gonna hold the frame here for a couple of seconds. So if you need to, you can take a screenshot and what I'll do is I'll link this code snippet down in the description so you can copy and paste it on your website directly. So create the new HT access file and paste that, this code in. Let's save or I say just save it once and then try if you can access your website and the error is solved. The next solution you should try is increase the PHP memory limit. Now, sometimes you have a lot of things happening on the site and the amount of memory you have available for PHP to execute is not enough. So that's why you have this problem. Now, to solve this problem, the easiest way is to just go and ask a hosting provider to increase the memory limit. Because the other solution is going and editing your PHP configuration file. It's a little difficult, but if you want, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a small video or point you to the right direction to actually go and figure that out. Otherwise, asking the hosting provider that increase the memory limit to whatever is 128 megabytes or even 256 megabytes is a great way to see if the memory limit is the bottleneck which is causing the issue. The next solution you can try is try to deactivate all your plugins because one of the plugins that you might have installed on site might be causing any kind of issues which might uh, be causing the entire website to crash. So the easiest way to do this is actually two ways. If you have access to the backend, you can log into the backend, that's great. Just go to the backend, go to deactivate or go to the plugins area and deactivate all plugins. And then if your website starts working after this, then all you do is enable one plugin at a time and then go and test your site if it works. Most of the time, if this is the cause, then you will find the plugin very soon. Then either just don't use it, find a replacement, or if there's a pending update, then update the plugin to the latest version and then see if the problem persists. Most of the time, if the plugin is the problem, then using this or doing following these steps will solve the problem. The next solution you can try is changing to a different theme. Now, similar to how a plugin can cause this issue, a website theme can malfunction or have some problems that can also cause the issue. I had a similar problem happen to my website where one of the themes I was using, or not one of the themes, the actual theme I was using suddenly caused my website to crash. I couldn't figure it out. I had to talk to the hosting provider. They checked the logs and they identified the issue for me. 
So even I didn't think of it, but this can happen. So what you do is just go into your website area and install a new theme just to test out if the theme is causing the problem. And if that works, then just switch to a new theme, which is better and efficient and preferably does not cause your website to crash. So hopefully following these steps will help you solve the uh, 500 error on your website. Now, there are a couple of other additional solutions, but they're not fit for beginners. So I'm not including this as part of the video. The best solution I can recommend if doing all of this doesn't help, then just talk to your hosting provider and tell them that, hey, my website is giving me this error. I've tried these, these things. Please help me solve the issue because they might have some additional data that they can look at and interpret, which you might not be able to do it. And then they'll help you solve the problem. The next most common issue in WordPress is called this site is experiencing technical difficulties and kind of looks like this. I'll paste it on the screen here. And what this does or what this means is basically a, I say a variation of the error 500. Because in the more recent version of WordPress, I think after WordPress 5.2, WordPress has had uh, or I'd say WordPress included some protection mechanisms to help website not crashing in case any plugin or theme actually misbehave. So if you're seeing this kind of problem in your WordPress website, then the ideal solutions would be to disable all your plugins and test and changing your theme and test if the problem persists. So as I said, go in inside your admin area if you can log in, disable all the plugins and then see if the problem persists or if the problem is solved. If the problem is solved, then one of the plugins is causing the issue. Then just find or enable individual plugins at the same time and then you'll find out which of these plugins was causing the issue. If the plugins were not the issue, check the theme as well. Change to a different theme and see if the problem is fixed. If it is fixed, then the theme was the problem. And if you can't log into the admin area of your website, then you'll have to use FTP and then rename your plugin and theme folder to make sure that the plugins on your website will be disabled automatically and then test it out. Again, I think we probably have a video already created on the channel. So I'll just place it in the card here and also in the description of the video. So you can go watch that video to understand how that process is done. The next issue in WordPress that you might encounter, which you can solve is a syntax error. Now syntax error might look like this. So if I zoom in, you might see it. This is what it might look like. It might point to a specific location where uh, WordPress is seeing some issues. Or sometimes it might look like this, where everything looks fine, except for you start seeing some random code being inserted. Now, all this means is that whatever code you have on your site has some formatting or syntactical issues. Now, this might be in a plugin or theme already, or might be the result of a code snippet that you've added. So in this case, what I would go is again, I would disable the theme to check if the problem is solved. And I also disable plugins one by one to see if they are causing the problem. And if you've made any kind of modifications on your site, added some code snippets on your site, that might be the first or primary reason why this problem is happening. So what I would suggest is if you want to add code snippets to your site, then always use the free plugin WP code to add code snippets because it not only manages code snippets, but it's a safer way to add code snippets to your site. If anything happens, you can always disable the code snippet instead of having to go through your files and figure it out. So that's the way to solve the syntactical errors on WordPress. The next common issue in WordPress that you might face might be a database connection issue. And it looks like this. The WordPress website might say error establishing a database connection. Now there might be a few different reasons why this error occurs. So let's discuss the potential causes and the solutions one by one. The first cause of this problem might be a database migration or changing of credentials on your WordPress website. So if somebody has made any changes to your WordPress website recently, or you've changed host or you've migrated your website, then the credentials of the database might not have been transferred correctly. So all you need to do is go into a WP config file directly through FTP and see if the database credentials are actually up to date. If this is too technical for you, then asking help from your support or hosting support is the best way to go because they can identify the issue much faster and help you solve it. Now, if the error on the screen specifically says that one or more tables could not be found or are corrupt, then you can try repairing the database. And the process is actually very simple. You don't have to do it manually. So all you have to do is take this piece of code that I'm gonna place on the screen, this file, and just edit your WP config file. For example, I've just opened up the uh, WP config file, you can see it here, of a local website that I have, and just go to the location where it says this, that's all, stop editing, happy publishing. Just before this line, add it, save it, and then when you go to your website, you open the website again, it will show you something like this, which will allow you to actually repair your database. Now, this is not the only way to repair a database. Sometimes hosting providers have their own custom backends for their own hosting providers or for customers. So in that case, sometimes you might have access to the backend operations of the database where you can manually go and say, hey, just click this button to repair the database or trigger repairing the database. So that's also a good starting point to look out for. And of course, you can always ask the hosting provider support team to understand if they can point you in the right direction to solve the problem. 
Another common issue with databases which causes this errors to occur is that the database is too overloaded which causes sometimes the database to crash. This has happened to my websites many times. I was experiencing very laggy backend and uh, laggy admin area and a lot of times I would start seeing these errors. So the only solution that worked for me that time was first to restart or reboot the database server and then try to identify why it was being overloaded and then I fix some things and then that problem is solved. So maybe just go into your backend area and see if you have an option to restart your database server and then sometimes restarting also helps and then you can identify what the root cause is by figuring out more logs or just investigating. The next most common problem in WordPress that might be really scary is the white screen of death where you can just see the browser bar and the name in it but nothing else loads. This also might translate into an error which is called the critical error happens on your website. So in both cases the process to uh, actually find out the issue or resolve the errors are the same. Now if you see a white screen of death first you need to check out if other websites are loading on your site because if your website host is down then that might be the issue and there's nothing you can do about it unless your host actually fix the problems. The second thing you can do if you have a critical error on your website then check your email because whenever WordPress has critical errors after WordPress 5.2 they have a feature built in where they'll send you an email first of all that error critical errors happened on your site and they'll also send you a recovery link inside the email. Once you click on the recovery link, you will be able to access the backend area of your website and WordPress usually has a descriptive way or to show you on a notice what was causing the issue. So you might see one or more plugins uh, failed to load or the theme failed to load or something like that which will give you the next few steps to take to solve the problem. For example, if you see that the WordPress plugins did not load or one or more plugins did not load, then the obvious solution is to first disable all plugins and then test out which of these plugins is causing the issue. Once you identify the culprit plugin, don't use it, maybe test out an alternative plugin or contact the plugin developer to understand what is causing the problem. Once again, just finding this out will help you first get your website back online, then you can start solving, solving the issue once you identify what the root cause of the issue was. Now one more thing I'd like to add on top of this is that sometimes the plugin or theme is not the issue but the amount of available memory to them is. So even though the WordPress website or the plugins and themes you're using doesn't have any problem, the amount of memory available to them is too low. So in that case, getting your memory increased, which I already described in the previous step. So if you have, let's say a PHP memory execution limit of 64 megabytes, maybe try bumping up to 128 megabytes or even 256 megabytes. And if that solves the issue, then it was not the plugin or the theme, but the available memory available to them. The last WordPress problem I'd like to discuss is a 404 error. If you're randomly starting to see 404 errors on all posts on your website, then these are the steps you need to take. The first thing you need to check if you added any kind of custom code on your website. Now this custom code might not be a code snippet, but additional plugins. So I would start at custom code first if you made any changes to your WordPress theme files, or if you added custom code snippets to your site. The best way to do it is with WP code, by the way. WP code will automatically detect if your code snippets has technical or syntactical errors. And it also has a testing mode, so you can enable the plugin as a test to see if it's causing any issues on your website. That's a much safer way to add code snippets on your website. The second thing you might need to try is, again, disabling all your plugins and themes to figure out if they are causing the problem. I would start with plugins first because they have a lot of plugins usually on your website. And then if the plugins are not the issue, try the theme next. The next thing I would try is again fixing my permalinks. So I'd go into my WordPress settings, into permalink settings and then enable or I say resave my settings just to see if the permalink settings were affected or the HT access file was affected and saving the permalinks again will usually fix the issue. The next thing I would try is seeing the permissions or double checking the permissions of the HT access file. I would go into my WordPress settings or the FTP server and double checking the permissions of the HT access file. In the ideal scenario, the permissions for HT access file should be set to 666. I'll add some footage here so that you can understand how it's going to look like on a real website. And the last solution I would try is contacting my hosting provider because they usually have technical support guys, they can help you solve the problem. So those are the most common issues in WordPress and how to solve them. Watch these videos next to increase your WordPress education. Like, share, subscribe. You're watching Yuvraj from WBeginner. I'll catch you in the next video.